Hello everyone, this is Rodrigo from your class of Principles and Practice of Clinical Research 2022. And this time we're going to talk about the unbearable truth on the p-value and why it is not as significant as you thought. Along this small video we're going to uh, mention plenty of insights from a very important and transcending article within statistics plus two textbooks by Professor Fregni and uh, the rest of the um, principles and practice of clinical research coordinators. So some of the points that we're going to assess are what's the null hypothesis, what is the p-value, how can we interpret the p-value results, and what other factors may influence the p-value. Also, we are going to talk uh, briefly about the confidence intervals and the effect on p-values and finally, we're going to conclude with take-home messages according to all the information provided for the, within the video. Well, first off, it's important for us to, to understand the main concept of the null hypothesis. It is, uh, null hypothesis per se is created to be rejected or not rejected in order to find a difference between the groups of study. Whenever the null hypothesis is rejected, therefore, by definition, the alternative hypothesis will be true. In clinical research, comparing uh, like an example two populations, whenever we, ha we find a difference among them, uh, it may be either by chance or by the effect of a certain intervention. So hypothesis testing will establish which of these explanations is more suitable for this scenario. By definition, the alternative hypothesis is the difference between two or more variables in an anticipated uh, time by the researchers according to clinical expertise and the previous scientific literature. This is the importance of performing a uh, previous review of the literature to understand um, the concepts and the up-to-date information of the, of the subject in order to um, to propose uh, an alternative hypothesis. Meanwhile, the null hypothesis is a construct that is based on the opposite of the alternative hypothesis, where we, asset, where we say that there's no difference in between the, um, uh, the observations of both populations studied. Uh, this is by all means uh, considering the actual knowledge where prior to your proposed study, your question, your research question, doesn't have an answer to prove that there's a difference. Therefore, null hypothesis is accepted up until the rejection uh, performed by the, the statistical analysis of your project, of your research project. So what does p-value mean? First of all, p-value stands, uh, p stands for probability. And here come uh, two questions that will make us uh, assess the definition better. How likely, likely is, is it that the observed difference among groups is due to chance? And how, therefore, how likely is it that null hypothesis is true then? We first mu must understand that probabilities in a statistical perspective uh, will be conformed by values that go from zero to one. The, whenever the values are closer to zero, therefore, the probability will say that observed differences are less likely to be explained just by chance. Meanwhile, when our values of uh, our p-values are closer to one, there is an inference that the observations are uh, that the, the difference is most likely explained by a random variation or simply by chance. Nevertheless, it's important to also um, disclose that hypothesis testing does not intend to accept or reject a null hypothesis per se, but to display if the observed difference is genuine or if it is not. Therefore, it, we should uh, not give enough, not give the 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 whole power or the whole uh, authority of. Uh, rejecting a uh, hypothesis to the p-value itself. Now, how can we interpret the p-values? We have to assess to the past, where uh, this is not a long time ago, 
Researchers used to classify their scientific studies according to significant or non-significant results based on the p-value where commonly we use a cut cutoff point of uh, 0.05. Nowadays, uh, with the proper use of statistical soft statistics software and more um, education within the, the area, we understand that this is an obsolete practice. Nowadays, it is preferred to disclose the exact p-value with no interpretation or uh, dichotomization of the value, whether if, if it is significant or non-significant. Why does this happen? Because what has been observed is that there has been a tendency of a misleading conclusion of either accepting or rejecting null hypothesis only based on a collectively agreed cutoff value of probability for statistical significance. This means that if we use the exact p-value test within uh, a research paper, we will encourage the researchers for educated judgment considering the context and many other variables uh, within the, the, um, the manuscript plus the available evidence. This will, um, this will make the researcher to reflect and to conclude a more solid um, reflection within what the, the manuscript and the results will portray. So what other factors influence the p-values? P-value by itself, when it is computed, it will be uh, related towards the direction of the hypothesis test, towards the statistical power, the study design, and the effect of sample size, which are predicted to be of clinical relevance according to the, to the study design. These are all intimately related to the sample size. Therefore, p-value will be heavily influenced by the sample size as well as in studies with larger number of participants will definitely have a more statistical power to detect significant differences even when they are clinically irrelevant. Studies with larger number of participants will have smaller p-values that may be the misunderstanding of a apparently statistical significant result. Now, what about the confidence intervals? Confidence intervals will provide a range of values in which true population uh, values will be relied on. Meanwhile, the p-value will all only provide the measure of strength or probability of a, of a given association within the population that may be held in between the confidence intervals. The confidence intervals and the p-value are closely related. This is by the calculation where they are, uh, by the way they are calculated using similar quantities uh, in a given population. And studies with larger uh, population will provi provide us narrower confidence intervals and smaller p-values, as we said before. Therefore, volume of data may project in p-value defenders uh, the, this so-called misunderstanding of results where they will, where, where the researchers that give uh, so much credit to the p-value, will assume that the significance uh, will only be based within the p-value, where only a large population of studies presented, and maybe, uh, all in all, the results will not be clinically relevant, even though the p-value will be apparently uh, significant. So in order to conclude this brief video, a couple of take-home messages are to remember that the p-value is the probability that an observed event is due to chance. It will only provide strength of association. It will not have the authority to um, classify what is significant or what is not within the, um, within the research and scientific universe. P-value cannot be used for clinical judgment either and practice without the context, the confidence intervals, and the study design consideration. P-value is severely affected by the magnitude of effect of what is being uh, measured plus the size of the population study. As in when we have large P-values, 
it will not always indicate no association, whereas in when we have small p-values, it does not always indicate an important clinical effect. Sample, study design, and confidence intervals must always be considered, never p-value alone. And to, to finish this video, let's remember that subdividing p-values into simple significant and non-significant um, status will uh, nowadays is considered as a poor statistical practice that is not recommended and it is recommended to be avoided. Thank you very much for watching. This is Rodrigo Uribe and I hope you liked this uh, short video. Please let me know all your comments. Bye.